Welcome to my lecture on graphs and distributions. Um, we're going to be doing this in R, and you'll need to also follow along. So you'll have this file and some of the data sets. This very first data set is located in Sleuth 3. And by the way, I'm going to use the hotkey for the run line. So this is the command enter on a Mac. So hotkey is command enter on Mac or control enter on PC, I believe. But as I don't have a PC, that's just running off of memory. Okay, so if you don't have not installed Sleuth 3, you need to run this line. I've already run this line, so I'm going to comment it out. But if you haven't, run it and uncomment it. Take out that pound sign and hit the run command. Okay. Since I have it installed already, I just need to access this data set in the library. The data set lives in the library Sleuth 3. So I'm going to do, so in this instance, I'm going to do this run command on the right. And you'll see it's executed that line, library Sleuth 3 below. Okay. If I were to do command enter, it will also run it. I'll do that now. And you, that way I don't have to use my mouse to run lines. Okay. The data set that I'm interested in is, is case 1202. And this will print out all the data. So I'll go ahead and run this with a hotkey using command enter. And you can see I get 93 rows of data. That's a little bit uh, too much data for my ability to process 93 lines. You know, I'm using a computer to try and simplify this. So if I just want to view a few of the entries, if I do case 1202, and then I do parentheses, this right here, that gives you the first six entries of the data set. So it just gives you a little portion of it. So now I ran that, right, and I executed right here, and it gives me the first six entries. I could view the last few entries of the data without knowing how long or how big it is using that command. I can also use I can also use this. I can use the head command of case 1202 to get the first six entries. And that's a lot more convenient than just typing this out. So a lot of times you'll see people just type head case 1202 to get an idea. Um, if you wanted an idea of the size, of the data set. You could do this. You can do dimension of case 1202. And here it says there are 93 rows and seven columns. So that means that there's 93 observations and seven variables that you can use. Okay. Um, the variables that you can use are going to be given here. So um, so this command asks it to name the variables in the data set. And this is only available if the data set's in a library. Otherwise, you're out of luck. These are the seven variables you can use. And there's more information because this did come from a library. I can just type question mark 1202 that pulls up the documentation. Okay, so this data set gives you the variables base salary, salary 77, sex, seniority, age, education, experience. These are the items that you're allowed to use in your analysis. Okay. And it's nice that it has a little bit of a description here, but like I said, that's only if you're able to pull, have the data set come from a library. Okay. Now, suppose you want to actually access like the starting salary, that is the base salary. Well, you could specify it. And what this does is this selects all ro rows. I didn't select anything right here, so that means select everything. But I'm selecting one single variable or column, and that's base salary. You can see base salary is referenced there, and it's also referenced here. Okay, So I could do that. That gives me base salary. Or more commonly, people put a dollar sign right here. 
and I'm allowed to now refer to that column once I specify the data set. So this refers to the column once I specify the data set is case 1202, it prints out the same information. And this does exactly the same thing. It prints out the first column of case 1202 data set. So all of these three things do the same thing. It'd be nice if I could just call a variable, for instance. And for instance, make it make it so that I could just type base salary. Well, if I want to do that, I can. I just have to do what's called an attach command. And it says attach the names of the variables for this data set. And so now I can just type base salary. I get all of base salary. I can just refer to a data set as experience. I no longer have to do one of these three things. So that's just a nice little shortcut. Now, something that you'll have to do quite often when you have a data set is to sort or subset or select certain parts of the data. And that's going to be our goal here. Our goal is to select only female starting salaries. And our key here is going to be to use this which command, which returns the index for a logical condition. Okay. So what this does is let me just type out um, head of case 1202. And let's go a little further. Head of case 1202. And I'll show the entire uh, data set. So just case 1202, not the first six entries. Okay. So if I scroll up here, notice that the first female entry is at the 15th row, then the 16th row, okay, and so on. So what this does, this command, this which command, is that it determines which rows, the indexes of which rows, the category female appears under sex. So that's the variable that I want to match female. So I'm asking the computer to match the columns that refer to female, and I'm asking which rows correspond to that. So let's execute that. And now you don't see anything. Um, so I'm asking it to print it. So you can see it prints out row 15, 16, 17, 18, etc. And on 15, if we scroll up here, that's the first entry where the value of sex takes on female, that logical condition. And 16 as well, but nothing before 15. So there's no rows of 14, 13, or anything from 1 to 14 in this index. Okay. Now, if I want to access just the data that corresponds to female, I can do this. So notice that every single value of the variable sex is female, okay? Because that's what I asked the computer to do. And now I have information on female starting salaries, salaries in 1977, their seniority, their age, their education, and their experience, okay? Now, if I want to access the data that corresponds to female starting salary, I will select females with this index, and then I'll select starting salary with that command, okay? Or I can just use the shortcut of base salary, and then feed in the, the indices that correspond to females in this way. So I'm showing you multiple ways to do the same thing, and notice that whether I type this command or this command, I have exactly the same data, right? So 4,800 there, 4,800 there, the first one being 5,100 in both. And now I can do some simple statistics if I wanted to. I could compute the median female salary. I could compute the average female salary. And I can use other logical operators with this which command. 
So I can ask for age or education. And so I can ask for the data sets which correspond to, for education to be less than 10 and age to be less than 400. And remember, age is in months, okay? Um, so I can determine this, okay? With this which command, it'll select the indices where this is true. And notice that there's a logical operator. That operator means or. So one or the other is satisfied. And your logical operators are, it does not have that value. Check to see if it has the value with a double equal. It has both values with the and, or there's this or command, which is like that, one value or the other, okay? So I can run that and it determines the indices where that's true. If I replace that or operator right here with an and, look what happens. I have only 30 and 36 and 90. That's okay because we expect both conditions to be satisfied only for these values, for this value, and for this peop value. So only three people satisfy both criteria. If I wanted to access that data for the or, I can do that right here, okay? And now I have the observations that correspond to an education of less than 10 or an age of less than 400. And we have all the information on those individuals here, okay? Now, now that we've done dealt with selecting variables and obtaining variables, um, now you can finally make graphs of them. So if I wanted to make a histogram, I just have to use this his command and that's real easy. And all I do inside the, the histogram command is I put the data. So I'm gonna take a histogram of base salary and it appears in this right. Now notice it ap appears to be non-symmetric and skewed. That's something that's talked about in your textbook, okay? Here's another histogram. And I say that this is a better histogram because here I can control the title. Instead of saying history, uh, histogram of base salary, I can sit, retitle that to be histogram of starting salaries. I can label the x-axis instead of base salary. I can label it starting salary. I'm going to keep the y label as frequency. Okay. I can change the colors to green and blue, and I can set the the x-axis to display from 3,000 to 9,000, I can control how many bars appear. So here I'm setting the bar to be eight, okay? And I can set that to a different number, but sometimes the programming in R will override it. So just keep that in mind. And I can also change this frequency to be, instead of displaying frequency, I can ask it, for like a relative frequency. Let's see what happens when I display this. So now I changed it to blue. I can change things to a different color like black here. And now I changed the border to be green. So, you know, you can change the displays of these things if you'd like, okay? And maybe I want to change it from frequency to counts, okay? So there on the y-axis, it got changed to counts, okay? Now I could do this for data that we sorted through, okay? I can ask for the starting salaries of females and display its histogram right here. So right here, I made the histograms for females and notice it looks different than when the two groups were combined, okay? That's going to be a really interesting observation that it has a different um, histogram shape than the overall one. Okay, so one of the things you're going to do in your homework is make a histogram of the male wages and comment on it. Okay, um, one question I can ask, does this histogram appear to be approximately normal? I'd say approximately, but not completely normal, right? It's not completely symmetric about the middle. I can't fold it in half and get the ref get a perfect match, okay? Um, it does have a bell shape. It's a little bit skewed, 
but if I were asked, is it approximately normal? I would say yes, okay? Is it completely normal? No, okay? And in statistics, there's gonna be that wiggle room, like the phrasing of it, is it approximately? Is it exactly? Those are gonna be key words, okay? Now there's other visual displays of data that's talked about in your textbook and in our lecture. So one of them is going to be a stem and leaf plot. Notice that this again looks like a histogram, but and notice that this is of the base salary. So men and women put together, but it looks like a sideways histogram. So this stem and leaf is exactly a histogram, it's just displayed a little bit differently and your categories are selected um, a little bit differently as well. So here the category would be like 40,000 to 40, to less than 50, to, to less than 45 um, as a base salary. So 4,000 to less than 45, okay? Now, if we wanted to, we can also ask it to do uh, some calculations. I can ask for the median, so the point that divides half the data set. 50% of individuals make less than $5,400 as their starting salary at this bank, okay? I could ask for more information. So notice there's the 5,400 and they label it. This is the first quartile, so 25% of individuals at this bank make less than that amount of money. 75% um, make more than 6,000. And it displays the max and the min. Notice the max corresponds to basically the CEO, so that's why they're making the highest amount of money there, okay? Um, I can ask for the interquartile range, remember, the interquartile range is the first, the third quartile, which would be this 6,000 minus the first quartile, which would be this 4980. Okay, so that's 1020. And if we were to do IQR of the data set, it'd return exactly that, okay. If I wanted the five number summary, it'll return exactly the same information as summary, right? five number and summary return the same thing, okay? But it's a little bit more clear that that's the five number summary, which is the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum value. Now, all of this information allows you to build a box plot. In R, I can just type box plot, and I'm going to feed in some extra things here. So some of the things I'm gonna feed in are so I'm gonna label the x-axis labeled the y-axis and changed the dimensions on y, okay? So here's a box plot of base salary. It looks to be relatively symmetric and um, non-skewed because the lengths from the first and the third quartile are relatively even and the length from the top of the fences are approximately the same. So this looks like it has nice symmetry about the median, okay? If I wanted some demographic information, I can ask for it in a bar chart. And what this table command does is it gives you the counts. So let's execute that over here. So the table command gives you the counts of the demographic info on the variable sex, okay? And if I were to do that, it tells me how many female and how many male, and I can display this in a bar chart. It has to be a bar chart because this information is categorical, okay? So here's our bar chart, and we're done. It tells us that there's 61 female and that there's 32 males, okay? Now, what one thing that's common is that um, histograms and um, box plots kind of give you two different ways 
of viewing skewness and judging it. So I'm going to have a normal distribution, which is symmetric, and I'm going to have a skewed distribution. That's labeled data.normal. That's the symmetric distribution. Data.skew is the skewed distribution. And I'm going to graph their histograms and their box plots laid over one another. Okay, so first I'm going to generate these data sets. Don't worry about these commands, just run with them. And then if I want to overload the data, overlay the data, I need this command. So I'm going to execute that. Okay. And finally, I'm going to make my histogram. So there's the symmetric one. Here's the skewed one. Here's the box plot of the symmetric one. And here's the box plot of the skewed. Okay. And if I were to take a closer look at this, like the histogram looks relatively symmetric and bell-shaped, so that's nice and normal. And then if I look at its corresponding box plot, it looks nice and symmetrical about the middle. Now keep in mind, nothing is perfectly exactly symmetrical, but it's always going to be like, is it, the question that's being asked, is it approximately symmetric, okay? And if you go to the right here, the answer should be no way. Is this histogram on the right, the skewed one, is it, is it approximately symmetric? It's way off, and if we look at the box plot of the skewed histogram, we can see that the length of the upper fence is not even close to the lower fence. So that's one way of judging the skewedness. Another way would be if this median was much closer to that uh, first quartile, that'd be another way. Or if it was, what did, if the median was not exactly in the middle, okay? So it does have one indication that it might be, but if you look at the fences and the, all the data that lies above the upper fence, you should say there's no way that this can be symmetric. It has to be skewed, right? Now this one, yes, there is data that lies above it, but it's not terribly concerning considering how symmetric it is. And we'll, so there's four points above this upper fence and only one below this one. Yeah. But overall, the quality of the graph displays a symmetric quality, okay? Um, so now, let's go into loading a data set. And this one is one that's from your stats textbook. It's on len len leniency. And what it measures is people categorize how lenient people react to individuals based on one of four categorizations of the individual smile, okay? And this is an Excel um, file data set. So I, in order to read in Excel data sets, I need to have this package read Excel. So if you go ahead and run this line, if you consent to it, as I already have it run, I'm going to comment it out. So after you run that line, line 136, just hit command enter for the library to load the library. Now in 139, I'm going to load the data by calling that library. And you need to make sure sure that you set the working directory to the uh, location of the data file. And I have this data file on my desktop. I just downloaded it and dragged it onto the desktop. So I'm going to show you how to set your working directory. So you go to session, set working directory, and you can choose directory. So I'm going to choose it to be on my desktop and I'm going to open that. So that's all I did. This sets it to my working directory, which is where this file lives. So you need to run, to go through that process right there, okay? Now, I'm gonna read in this file. When I read in this file, it doesn't have the names for the columns or the variables, so I need to run this command, make.names of the data I read in, and now I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna display the data. So I have this data set, 
and what it shows is the smile. It's categorized as one, two, three, or four. Um, and these smiles, a value of one doesn't make really much, make much sense. Um, so this is on the ordinal level. Like there's an unfriendly smile and there's a friendly smile, but we're considering this data, the value of one doesn't mean that two is twice as friendly as one. It's just a category. So keep that in mind about your data type. The leniency is truly a numerical measure. The researchers are categorizing that, okay? And then what we're doing here is we are making a graph of the box plots of the leniency at, according to each smile type, okay? And so here you can see, well, look at that. I have these three different categorizations of smile type. One of them is friendly, one of them is more genuous or happy. And I can see that there's a lot more variability in one that someone might assign as more ambiguous how lenient they would be if they had a smile type of one. Whereas if they had a smile type of three, you can be fairly more certain as to where 50% uh, of the outcomes will lie, will be between the first quartile and third quartile of the smile type of three. And you'll have a leniency that could be a little less than six to a little bit more than four and a, a four and a quarter, I'd say. And if you had a smile type of four, I'd say that's the worst outcome to try and get leniency with. So if you want leniency, you have a more certain outcome with three, you can have a lot more favorable outcome with smile type of one. And again, this is in one of the case studies in your textbook. This data corresponds to that. Um, one thing that you may also have to do from time to time is to load a CSV data set. That's different than, for example, loading an XLS uh, data set. So be very careful about what types of data sets you have. Okay, and I'm going to go through an example of this. I downloaded a coronavirus data set. It's also on my desktop, so I don't need to reset it. And the command to load in a CSV file is this read.csv. And the, type, the file name is covid.csv. That loads the data set. Uh, then if I want to display it, this is some of the information it gives me. It gives me the date. It gives me the start and the end. It gives me the age group. And it gives me COVID-19 death, the uh, ethnic, uh, or excuse me, the the racial background and um, if it could have been an influenza death, okay? And I could do some more data analysis on that, but that's all that I want to, you guys to look at for right now, okay? Thank you very much.